Hey guys, it's Matt. I was writing most of the day yesterday, cleaned it up a bit this morning before this recording. I was going to take yesterday off and go up to Dutch Wonderland up by Lancaster. <laughs> it's basically like the lamest <laughs> amusement park in the world. I guess it's good for little kids. It's really it's true. It's called Dutch <laughs> Wonderland in the heart of Amish country. Sorry, about the, the writing and, and reading here, I think this is very important. Um, I think I need to clarify my position. You've heard me say, uh, oh, the world isn't very real, or no real world could do that. And then people, well, that's simulation theory. Oh, no, that's simulation. No, it's very important to clarify this, to tell you about pathetic, not milk tactics, understand what is going on, tell, it tells you about yourself. And if this reading doesn't go too long, I would like to maybe just talk about some I don't know, some just shoot the shit at the end. Uh, just some things that pop up that might be fun to talk about. If it gets over an hour, I'm not going to do that. But I'll try to do more of that. Just say, well, this is the purpose of the video or the presentation. And then after that, behind like a safety wall, we'll just talk in general about things. That way people can't get too upset at me for talking about trivial things. But say, I put that behind a safety wall. You can't say, Matt, you're doing a screen exercise. Matt, didn't you say we'd all move forward? And all those comments can stop because this would be like if we just shoot the shit about all the reviewers and stuff about the rings of power, just keep saying the same things over and over and over again. We can do that sort of conversation behind the safety wall after the real presentation. Ah, okay. Now, you've heard me say a few times or a few thousand times, the world isn't very real. And I keep saying over and over again, no real world could do that. You've probably heard me say that. No real world could pull that off. Now, what does this mean? It's time for me to clarify this. People getting rowdy and restless. Now, when I say these things, does anybody listening to the sound of my voice think that I'm trying to start another endless rabbit hole debate about simulation theory? Is that where I'm going with this? So we can jump down in another endless rabbit hole debate, dive back into the bog and weeds on simulation theory. Start the carousel. Let's get them going again. We'll go round and round on this one for a decade or two. Nope, that is not what I'm trying to do at all. In fact, just the opposite. When I floated this to you, the world isn't very real. No real world could pull this off. Your agreement or disagreement to that really is just basically starts with a one word world one one world one word answer yes or no it's an impression about the world and this reality no real world could pull that off the details and jumping into the bog are not necessary it's an just an impression we get to start someone say yeah that's i think i'm at the point where that's right i just don't see how all this goes down with explanations that lie between my bookends. The, the point is the details are unnecessary. And the pursuit of details, of course, once again, is what it wants us to do. Diving into the weeds is unnecessary. Saying the world isn't very real simply starts with a very basic understanding that the reality in general that we live in is something other than what the authorities say it is. But you'll see there's no reason to go past that. that it starts there and it ends there. It's basically saying the reality is just something else, and it's not what these authorities say it is. That meets the definition of the world isn't very real, but then it wants you to dive in the bog, and that's what we're not going to do. It's just that simple. People in this community, in our community, don't agree with the mainstream authority very often, right? Am I missing something? We generally don't agree with what authority says is happening. So that by itself means... The world is something else than what the authority, or what Albert Einstein, or what Neil, or Brian Cox says it is. But Matt, uh, making statements like that, that opens up this big debate on simulation theory. No, it doesn't. Why must it? Why? A debate on the details of fluid reality or simulation theory is exactly the rabbit hole it wants you to get involved with. The dark part of this reality thrives on complexity. The dark part of this reality thrives on bogging you down into the details and into the weeds. If we clearly see that's what it wants, we do the opposite. One need not go further than the eclipse. Do you believe a solar eclipse is what Stephen Hawking says it is? A perfectly round rock moving in front of a perfectly round burning thing who seems to be, they seem to be mating from your perspective on earth? 
Or do you not believe what authority is telling you? If you don't buy that, then that simply means what is really happening with the eclipse, as one example amongst thousands, is something else. Well, don't we have to discover exactly what's happening then? Don't we have to research and find out exactly what's going on with the eclipse and everything else? Is just saying, well, it's not what authority says, it's something else. Is that enough? Is that going far enough? Sure it is. It wants, again, it's basic blocking and tackling. It wants you to dive into the details and it wants to bog you down. It's what it does. Why would we have to do that? Why do I even need one detail if I realize the most important part? It's what's happening is not what they say. That's all I care about. Well, the eclipse, Matt, it, it could be Rahu or Kehu or whatever the hell that is. You know, the black sun or two parts of the same system that generate energy refreshing itself. And that shit's fun to debate. It's fun to talk about, but I don't need to know those details. But it goes well beyond the eclipse times a million. We don't just have the eclipse anymore in our bizarro world sample size. The sample size is gigantic. We have thousands of things that don't add up at this point. And they come daily, by the way. People send them to me daily. There are many anomalies at this point that I would even call reality breakdowns. We have tons of strange coincidences and synchronicities in our own lives. And then those that match what's going on out in the world in some bizarro set of circumstances. The one in a million coincidences just keep coming before our eyes. We have the numbers then and the strange gematria that pops up almost every single time we look at something closely. In the past, all that we could come up with was those numbers have to be planted somehow, planted by some incredible powers that be in smoking rooms. Because all we could do is look between our own reality bookends. The answer must be between these bookends. It must be. Well, now we're bigger than that. Now we see the gematria seems to be some sort of um, the structure of reality itself coming forth. We disagree there on the details, but we see it's a lot more than people running around and putting the numbers in hundreds of millions of times. That's the a world that's very that the world that is very real has to have a very real explanation. The numbers are planted there, Matt. When you see, oh, the world isn't very real, then you op it opens you up to other and greater possibilities, that these numbers are the governing dynamics potentially of the reality itself. They come forth on their own without being planted. Continuing our strange list, we have people around us that we care about, or cousins or best friends, who appear to be on some kind of download refusing to acknowledge common sense arguments, things that are right in front of their face, like they're tuned to some sort of frequency. That by itself, the way people act around us, they don't point and scream like Donald Sutherland, but the way they act, that's by itself. Forget the eclipse. That's enough to say this world is very real. Some weird shit going on here. Continued. We have a this strange group of bad guys who endlessly and tirelessly, like the Terminator, they endlessly plot and plan to take more and take more and take, and then to, at the same time, destroy, quote, human freedom and destroy spirituality. And they never rest and they're never satisfied. That by itself, no real group of people would do that. What the hell is going on here? How much of this do we need to see? This paragraph by itself, I'm still reading it. one paragraph, I'm giving generalizations where all the strange anomalies come from. This could easily go on for 100 page. 100 page? Could easily go on for 100 pages. No real world could do this. I keep saying that, and every time I say it, I'm starting to laugh to myself. It sounds like I'm doing, do not go gentle into that good night. <laughs> Repeating, no real world. I'm going to have to stop, take that. It, it's just people are going to say, is he... This is some weird abomination of do not go gentle into that good night. Sorry. Let's just do this one time. Let's just throw a dart into a big topic and see what we find, see how immediately it breaks down, see how it divides all common sense, see the repeating scripts of this reality and strange themes that just flow through everything. Okay. Throw in the dart. Boom. Oh, the Great Pyramid. Oh, yeah. There's no consensus, even with modern technology, 
how it was built. As usual, we have the same strange repeating themes and scripts that weave through the reality regarding this megalith and all the megalithic sites. Like other sites, it's the same story that they had to go 50 to 100 miles away to get the gigantic blocks. Well, if they had to mine the damn gigantic blocks that they couldn't even move with a donkey or a jackass or a burrow 100 miles away, why don't they just build the damn pyramid there? Well, Matt, it has, they understood the stars and the astrology. Okay, yeah, let's not get bogged down. I hear you. I got it. It's repeating themes that give the reality away. Saying, wait, we have the same damn theme over here. And these are on ley line, the same damn ley lines over here. You back up far enough, you say, wait a second. It's like a script here. And you want to tell me it's a real world? You know, the same repeating themes. None of the, those that built the megalithic sites, none of them signed their name. Nobody signed their name to the great accomplishment. So nobody has any fucking idea what happened or how they did it or who the hell did it. It's the same themes over and over again. See, when it's the same themes and it's like, wait a second, you, you have to back up far enough. This isn't a coincidence. It's a re, some sort of reality trick being played here. If you get too close to it and just have your, your head laying across the Great Pyramid all day and you're trying to bang your head against it, you're too close to it. You can't see the greater tricks or potentially that are going on here. Tricks in a very large spiritual battle to get you distracted and in the bog so you don't ever find out about yourself and what you're here to do. We've got these big Egyptologists at Oxford and Cambridge and Yale and Harvard and MIT, and they've got to strut around like they know how it happened. <laughs> they've got to pretend to keep their $800,000 salaries, a million dollars with benefits, and so they can make sure they go to all the fancy parties. They've got to strut around like a demented rooster or a peacock, pretending they know how all these megalith structures, they don't, you know, they don't have a clue. For all they know, if you really put them on a lie detector test, with over that truth serum that was given Arnold Schwarzenegger in True Lies, they would say the Figari tribe built them. For all the, for the Figari tribe, where the fuck are we? That They don't know shit. I no longer jump into the details when it dangles its carrot in my face. We have need to have at least learned the basics in what we've been pursuing over the last 10 years. Notice its basic tactics. I don't take the carrot. I back up real, real far and go willy, willy, willy high up to see and look to see what the general not milk tactic is. Matt, what are you talking about? There's no reality tactics. It's just, it's just bad people like Melvin P. and, and Dr. Eve Montrelia. It's just bad people that went astray. And it all, it's, it can be, Matt, all of this can be explained with regular means. They're just power hungry and money hungry. Of course, it's, there's no grand spiritual battle or grand scheme going on. It's just people that went bad. And Matt, you just have evil people in the world and good people. They're doing it all. Hey, if you're still there after the 10 years and all we've looked at, I'm sorry. What's that term? When you get your Haitian divorce, uh, irreconcilable differences? That's from that, you know, mega not milk system player, Donald Fagan, a part of Steely Dan. I mean, look at his lyrics. I mean, what a system puppet. You should do a whole free voice video on his broke ass. Man, he ain't, you broke. He ain't broke. <laughs> this, it's, it's, this is my Haitian divorce. Haitian divorce is pretty... I like some some of the music. Um, I had a friend, boy, he hated Steely Dan. I, you put that on, he he got almost violent. He had to run out of the room or he said, that's got to go off. It was, some people really are averse to Steely Dan. Sorry. What I do is I just back up as far as I can. And there's a carrot. There's a carrot in my face. I'm just going to back up from it as much as I can. And then the carrot, oh, wait a second. Let's go up and look down from this height. And that that's just, oh, that, it's a whole not milk fishing fleet with guys on the end with fishing rods and carrots and you can see in general because you can see the whole fleet what it's trying to do uh, as a whole or in aggregate if you step away from the specific conspiracy if you if you if you get out of your your mud bath and you step away from your mud flood you you're too close to it that's what it does it says come on into mud bath Come on into mud flood. Get as close to it as you can. Look at your maps. Whatever. Then you're too close to it. You can't see the ultimate, the, the tactic of what's going on from 100,000 feet looking down. Have I ever said that before? Once or twice? And finally, to close out our list of general themes, um, for the triggered, do your earmuffs like old school earmuffs. 20 seconds. That's it. Earmuffs now. 
all of the crazy anomalies we talked about, if you're Mandela affected on top of this, you don't need to even have the rest of the list. You don't need to even have the eclipse if you're Mandela affected. Oh, I saw reality change in front of my eyes. Matt, you, you idiots, it's confabulation. Okay, take the earmuffs off. We're done for the triggered. Okay, this is the end of talking about the general bizarro reality themes. I'm not going to go into any details here. That's what we've been doing for 10 years. Look at this. What is this crazy shit horse shit? We've been doing this for 10 years. We, you remember what we've been doing for 10 years, right? The many of us, well, I can only speak for myself, but you get to the point where you're looking at the Kennedy to Lincoln synchronicities. Put your arms out, Kennedy to Lincoln synchronicities. And at least I was like, I don't need to see no more. I don't need to see any more. This is impossible. It's not, and if anybody's rising up out of the bathtub, rising above the water level, throwing their rubber duckies, and they said, well, Lincoln, Matt, it's not that that really happened. There wasn't really a Kennedy on Lincoln security detail before Ford's, Ford's Theater. They planted that. That's almost as hard from a reality perspective if they planted it, because this real history exists in like old rare books rooms in the library. They would they send their fleet of little blue people out into the middle of the night to change pages in, in library books so it all matched up. This stuff matches up before the internet. If it was just the internet, I agree. Reality is very flexible, quote, flexible from their perspective if everything came from the internet. This thing can be confirmed, this shit can be confirmed in books. Unless they, they send their fleet of little blue people out to break into hundreds of thousands of libraries across the country invade rare books rooms in the middle of the night. You know, Robert Langdon, as Tom Hanks, he tore out a page in Angels and Demons. Um, I was going to say Silence of the Lambs 2. It should have been Silence of the Lambs 2. It was the Da Vinci Code 2. These little blue people, they don't do what he did. They insert pages. It's impossible. Either way, the Lincoln, Lincoln, the Lincoln, the Lincoln to Kennedy synchronicities are impossible. I put it at, what did I put it at in the book? If the eclipse is one trillion or one in a trillion for the eclipse, per what uh, Neil says it is, the Kennedy to Lincoln, one in five billion, it would be, would be the probability. I don't know about you, I don't trust one in five billion odds. I know that's weird, but that's just me. At least initially, of course, we all have the tendency to want to explain all of these strange things just from normal means and between the bookends. It's a natural tendency, of course. But if we do that, we must see that what the Don Lemon system wants us to do is just that. Use normal and pedestrian means to explain it away. Look for a real-world answer. That's what the Don Lemon system wants us to do. I return to this. Do we in this community believe what the mainstream tells us? Of course we don't. That's the one thing we all have in common. We don't believe the Don Lemon presentation. We don't buy its BS. I, don't, I see through your ruse, ma'am. We, don't, we have that in common. But according to authority, there is a real rational explanation for everything here. That's what authority says. There's a scientific explanation for everything here. Everything. They're not going to say this is a reality breakdown. There's always a reason, according to authority, right from gravity to the eclipse. So they'll, they'll say they don't quite understand it, but it's, it has to do with the mass of bodies. Of course, they have a reason for freaking everything. I'm sorry, but if you think all of this is being pulled off via a way or in ways that neatly fit in between your bookends, then see what's happening. You're thinking exactly the way the system wants you to think. Again, authority has a scientific explanation for everything. So would you say it wants you to choose a scientific explanation for how everything's going on? Or would you think the, the, the authority here and the Don Lemon system and the not Nilk would want you to go the other way? You think it would want you to say the world isn't very real? Of course it doesn't want you going down that avenue. So when one steps forward and says, you know, I'm, I've seen enough, this world isn't very real, this is a key point, key moment in our truth or lives. This is then the first and most importantly, the last step in going the other way going the way the system doesn't want you to go. It's the first step, but it must be the last step. If it's the first step, but then you pursue the details, and you say, I'm going to take this 20-year investigation on, then that's what it wants you to do. Then you're playing its game. If you say, this, this couldn't, you know, this ain't very real, if that's the first step, and then it immediately becomes the last step, well, don't you want to pursue those details? You just said something very much in general that was very strange. You must pursue that. You must provide the details. If you chase it, 
it would be it's thrilled. It'll provide all the reality breadcrumbs you can chase for the rest of your lives. If you make that the last step, then you can step out of the bog. Let me address my favorite objection when I say no real world could pull that off, or this world isn't very real. Oh, here they come. Ah, that's we got you, Matt. That's a cop out. You just dumb. That's a cop out. You too dumb to ever figure it out. You too dumb to ever get the details that we need. So you just cop it out and say that we just need to end there because I'm really too stupid to figure it out. No, see, if I say that, it's not because I'm too dumb or dumber to find the details someday. It's to make sure I don't play its game, to make sure I don't do what it wants, to make sure it doesn't get me back to focusing on the wrong things, but instead I can then end the chase, and start focusing back on the right things. You've heard this one before. W-O-I-B-O-U-T, yourself. Focusing on worry about yourself. Focusing on me. What I'm here to do. If you're focusing on the details, what is the nature of this exact simulation? That don't mean shit for what you're here on this earth to do for yourself. The proper understanding does not require any detail. In fact, detail is counterproductive. It does not require the opening up of a new debate on simulation theory or the exact nature of this realm. That's, again, what it wants. That's another reality trick to get you to jump into another rabbit hole. Do you see the repeating themes on how not nilk works? It's so obvious at this point because not nilk tactics are all the same, and many of them are second grade tactics. We all should be ashamed of ourselves. We should have seen through them eight years ago, not just now. And even now, most of the truth community doesn't see through any of them. Here's the absolute basics as to how this Terminator operates the not nilk. That's what I call reality in general. You can't point to a bad guy. You can't point to a boss man. Everybody here runs around seemingly on a download doing what basically like a corrupting reality wants. It's very similar to Satan. I don't believe that's what it is literally, but that's generally where we have the most in common. The reality corrupter of spiritual beings. It understands, it understands that at some point, a group of real people People like you, people like me, a real people, a real person somewhere will start to begin to notice how strange things have gotten. It knows this is coming. It knows it can't hide its nonsense any longer from, quote, real people. It knows to these people its ruse lacks all professionalism. Okay, we've talked about how everything's been breaking down across the board many times. I think it kind of sees and senses that there's a small group of real people that are kind of seeing through everything here. And for some reason, the dynamics of the way the reality is in 2022, it can't return to professionalism. It's literally, the emperor has no closed. It's, it's been exposed. It's, it's absurd. And it knows per the dynamics or the governing dynamics of how this reality is or where it's going, where it's headed. It knows it can't return to professionalism. It knows that it's just going to get worse and more people are going to see through it. It only has one tactic, so guess what it must do? It's all about deception. It always has been about deception. The deception in the past, I think, has been more professionally presented. It was more believable, where now it's an absolute joke. But it only has one play, a run up the middle. It must, I'll get, give you two guesses, but you're going to need one. It must double down on its deception, make the deceptions even greater while using certain buttons and levers to somehow put everybody around us on some sort of mind control so they believe in all the bullshit that it puts forth. How that happens, we don't know, but it's not the purpose of this presentation. What it does at a very basic level is it puts forth a series of loathsome minions, low, Phil and Ben's low creatures, low minions to do its bidding. Melvin P. and Bezos and Gaga and Boner, Bono, Sonny Bono, and all these people it puts forth to do its bidding to drive all facets of culture and society to propagate its ruse. It must double down. It must double down. It cannot go back the other way. So in science, it is names that we know, like Neil deGrasse Tyson. In science, it's Brian Cox. He's the Neil deGrasse Tyson for Europe, I guess. And then it's Michio, friendly people like Michio Kaku. And wait for his, the nickname will come later. The gullible truth community has been well-trained to fall for its basic tactics. 
If you want a group of people to run for the exits on a certain topic, a group of real people that are investigating truth, if you want to get them, look, we're going to get them to run for the exits. Simply have Neil say something about a topic and express his slovenly beliefs in a way that matches what part of the truth community is saying. Get Neil to say what they're saying, or at least to get in front of where they're taking their argument. So in the world's simplest example of reverse psychology, the not-nilk knows the truth community will run from anything that these loathsome creatures say. So puppets like Neil and Elon, a scent for men, they come forth and they say, in this one example, they say, we live in a simulation. Then people like Nick Bostrom, whoever the heck that is, representing big academia, academica come forth and say, we live in a simulation. And people at MIT say, we live in a simulation. Therefore, anybody in the truth community saying anything similar is a shill. They're of the same ilk as Neil and Brian Cox, and they can't be trusted. Look, look, Matt's saying the same thing that Neil's saying. Do you see how second grade this psychology, or more specifically, this reverse psychology is? This is what mothers and fathers do to their two-year-olds. If Neil did a Milk Does a Body Good commercial, the truth community would rip the bottle right out of their baby's hands and replace it with a Snickers bar. Now, the final not milk tactic is impressive. Everything is first grade, and we can see right through it. In this way, it it is impressive, and we don't understand how it accomplishes this. It's like a a pitcher in the major leagues. It it has no pitches. It curveballs underhand, just just lob it up like a softball, but it has a 105-mile-an-hour fastball, and this is where it is formidable. It will lead those making certain discoveries about themselves. It will lead real people discovering themselves and the nature of reality. It will lead them by design, into a funhouse ride that contains endless complexity, endless conspiracy, and endless mirror maze rides. They'll say, it'll be like that friendly guy or the friendly clowns at the Wildwood Carnival or the Wildwood Piers. Come on in here. Come on. It's fun. It'll make you cool. Come on in. It's great at this. And then we conspiracy, we get close to it, and then we want to get closer to it. And it lures and it promises answers, and we want to get closer to it. This is where its ruse is formidable. Its ruse, its cunning attempt to trick us, no doubt, deserves a big, moldy, blue ribbon for this one. When a real spiritual being gets the slightest bit interested in a certain topic that relates to how this part of reality might work or must work, and boy, they're showing interest, then the conspiracy generation machine goes to work. I, and I'm almost, you know, I don't ha- have any other way to put that, but this is almost literal, guys. The conspiracy generation machine goes to work. N- I'm going to say it. No real world <laughs> could do that. When somebody starts to, quote, wake up, and a real spiritual being emerges to walk away from the nonsense, its last and most desperate tactic, but then formidable at the same time, is introducing the impossible and endless complexity surrounding the details of what must be researched. It's very formidable because there's impo- it's impossible for us to understand how it could generate uh, so much. Okay, if you've been doing this over five years, you know what I'm talking about. Well, how, how exactly does that work? That, what? Let's, let's zoom in. Let's use, what was that Professor X had that thing called Cerebro? Or let's zoom in on the Illuminati Control Center. Right now, come on, like Mr. Rogers, come along with me. Let's zoom in on the Illuminati Control Center, the Chernobyl Center, regional Chernobyl controls, to see what they're up to right now. Zoom in, and there are two people working. There's a giant control center like Three Mile Island. He says, look, Magneto. Come here. There's a guy down here. See, they're zooming in on somebody in Peoria while we're zooming in on them. There's a guy down there in Peoria that's waking up to things. In Peoria? Nobody in Peoria ever wakes up. No, he is. Look. Okay. Well, if he's waking up to things and discovering himself and walking away from all this nonsense, then you make sure he's fed a video where Neil deGrasse Tyson says the same thing that he believes. Make sure that pops up the next time he goes to YouTube. We did do that, sir, but he didn't take the bait. He didn't run for the exits. He doesn't care if Neil said it. He doesn't care if Pikachu said it. He's going to stick to his beliefs. He's his own person. He thinks for himself? 
Yes, sir. It seems that way. And this would be the first one in Peoria, Illinois, if anybody overseas doesn't know where that is. We can't have somebody thinking for themselves, can we? No, we can't. There's only one not milk tactic left when somebody gets to this stage of their personal transformation, metamorphosis, and wake up process. Implement in Star Wars, you get implement Order 66, or in Black Hawk Down, call Irene, Irene, or in Spaceballs, going plaid. We, whatever you want to name the last tactic, they got to throw everything at him. And what they're going to do is let's do it, let's put it forth. Confuse the living shit out of that poor bastard in Peoria. Pull the buttons and levers that we need right now to throw endless conspiracy at him. And on top of that, endless complexity and an endless maze and our conspiracy webs that we hope he'll jump into and then see to it that he spends the next 10 years, 15 and 20 years of his life examining all these details, examining and chasing more conspiracy and more yellow breadcrumbs. And then he'll spend eight years over here examining the nature of if we live in a simulation or not, then throw more shit at him. And we're going to, all we can do is try to tie his dumb ass up and confuse his dumb ass until he dies. That is our last tactic, but implement it now on that poor son of a beach in Peoria. Folks, why take the bait? We can learn our lessons right now. We don't have to be like the guy in Peoria. We don't have to live in Peoria. Don't take the bait. So what does the world isn't very real? What does it mean? Doesn't it mean we live in a simulation? Well, it might. Well, what's the nature of it? Who cares? It's fun to talk about sometimes. Might be fun to have a beer over, but the exact details and nature of it, how fluid reality works, who cares? By my heel, I care not. Does understanding the minute details on this topic or any topic help somebody understand themselves or what they're here to do in this tiny little one microsecond life? If you back up far enough, we don't live any longer than a mayfly. No, it's just a second grade, not milk trick so easy to see at this point. It's the only thing that matters. Worry about yourself isn't. Do what thou wilt. No, it's not selfish at all, because it actually ends up, the more you worry about yourself, the more you actually help other people. The more you put spiders out so you don't smash them. My mother running around yesterday trying to get bugs with a damn swatter. Swat! Crack, crack, crack. I'm going, oh, those poor bugs, but I ain't going to make a big scene. So how does not seeing the world as very real help us in understanding ourselves? Oh, it helps. Big time. Think about it. That said the guy in, was it falling down? You and me were the same, man. Think about it. Think about it. If, if you don't see the world as very real, it, it, it makes you bigger, okay? This world wants to make you small. Start with the basics. Always see what this world wants you to believe, and then you do the opposite. Pretty complicated uh, tactic that works every single time. What does this world want you to believe about yourself, about everything? And then just do the opposite? For the most part, the story this system tells you about who you really are, the story that authority sings via its sick, disgusting bard song about who you are, it's so depressing and it's the most nihilistic garbage ever laid down in a Star Trek convention. You know what I'm going to say? I'll be brief. 30 seconds or less. You, you're an accident, sir. An accident? You came from a big bang. Then you, your ancestors were monkey man. My ancestors were monkey man? Yeah, monkey. Man, you a marsupial. You a bacteria. You ain't nothing. You ain't ever going to be nothing. You came from an accident, sons of bitches. I mean, who would be dumb enough <laughs> to believe that? But that's what it wants you to believe, and that's what most people believe. So if you believe authority in this world, then you believe you're nothing but cosmic mildew. Now, we in this community, we have a big advantage over other groups. We know this system is a liar. We know it, it lies across the board. That's its nature. It makes it, what is that, Jim Carrey movie, Liar, Liar, makes him look like a caring individual, this system. We know that's how it operates. We know 100% that if Neil and other, other of his ilk, like Pikachu, deliver a big bang scenario, and we an accident that makes us feel like nothing, then we know the very opposite is true. It's the best news of all time. Then we know we're part of something that's far bigger and greater than this little snow globe. Just do the opposite 
of the creeps. I mean, I don't. Has that has that little axiom ever been broken? Matt, Matt, they're listening to you now. They're going to start doing a certain thing, so you do the opposite, which would be really what they want in a reverse, reverse, reverse psychology. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe they're listening to me in real time, and they're developing those tactics now, but I can only operate on their past pathetic tactics. Just kind of do the opposite of what they want. If this not milk reality says you are a sea monster, then know you are a pretty pony. If the not milk praised us and gave us uplifting hope and they changed and they, they made us feel all warm and promised for the future and made that made me try to make me feel big, then I would worry because if you see what I mean, it's very simple. Do you believe what the authority here tells you about anything or do you not believe what the authority here says? There's no reason to go further than that. There's no reason to go further than one big example, the eclipse. Do you believe what physicist Pikachu says the eclipse is or not? Most people here, no, you don't. Me neither. If that's the case, you then by default don't believe the world is very real. It's that simple. If you take the Big Bang and what authority says and you just throw it out and introduce what could be its potential opposites, it opens up incredible and wondrous possibilities as to who we really are. Even if we don't find the ultimate answer, we still then realize the opposite is true and the incredible nature of who we really are. By them being such assholes is actually, when we interpret it correctly, the greatest news of all time to us. Seeing the world isn't very real then is a good thing. That's my interpretation. Let me ask you, does the system want you coming to that conclusion? that the world isn't very real. Is that what Don Lemon would want you to believe? Does it want you seeing that? Of course it doesn't. How do we know? Because it fights 24-7, 365 Terminator. It fights to secure the opposite notion in real people. For its very sustenance, it must be believed in by real people. It might need this to survive. It lives by the mass belief because most people around us don't believe what we believe, it lives on the fact that they believe that everything here is real, the way authority presents it. That is a huge pillar that holds the entire thing up. It must be believed in. So that thing up there, the eclipse, that perfectly round, polished rock that people landed on, that was no big deal, was successful, 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 and it's floating in front of that birding thing, and you look up at that, you know, they just happen to be the same size when they go on top of each other, but that's just a coincidence, because you know one's 400 times farther away, that's just a coincidence, don't look behind the curtain, what an interesting coincidence, 400 times larger and 400 times farther away. Oh, cosmically, that's a one in a trillion. Oh, don't mind this, the odds. Come on, you're not one of those people, are you? But wait a second. What if that those odds are a little strange? One in a trillion? What if it's not a coincidence? Oh, oh no. My, my brother-in-law, Matt, here, you're not one of those people, <laughs> are you? You, you? Let me tell you about yourself. Matt, look up at that eclipse. You came, your ancestors, we all came from Homo Pithecus and Homo Pithecus erection, erectus and stuff. I can prove it. I can, yeah, I can prove it. Look here. Let's go into this museum here. Look under the glass here. Under this, look at the gla- under the glass here in this museum. There's these bone fragments here. These bone fragments were from your ancestor. They were? This fragments, but it's just, it's just half a finger bone. And what's this? That's the tailbone. That proves you were well, monkey man. It's just a half a finger and a tailbone here. How do I know this is my ancestors? Well, Matt, where are you going with this line of questioning? You're not one of those people, <laughs> are you? From the Not Nilk's perspective, when it comes to the need to be believed in, and it must be believed in, then that means everything must have a very rational and scientific explanation. That's the only way it, quote, gets away with it. Its tactics are always the same, and at this point, quite pathetic. It, it would, it's saying to you via frequ- to most people via frequency, or a download, or how it presents its news and its caricatures. It, no, this is, this is all very real. You must, who, who would say the world isn't very real? It's all very real. You must believe what I tell you. There are real explanations for all that happens here. You must trust my science. 
You trust the science. Science will win, right? Listen to what I say. Listen to my grass-fed bison. You can't do the math. Can you do the math? No, I, I can't do that complicated calculus. You can't do the math. That's right. So you leave it up to us. You get back to your Burger King counter. Leave the complicated stuff to us, little man. Get your, where's your dog going? Get your dog away from that curtain, bitch. That, the dog's pulling back the curtain? Well, pay no attention to the reality and buttons and levers being pulled. Once again, we come to the same conclusion that, quote, ancient man, no matter how primitive he was, and there's different debates, and Lemuria had a carousel rides, and Atlantis had this and that, it doesn't matter. No matter how primitive, quote, he was, he was way more spiritually advanced over modern, quote, man. If ancient man, while waiting in a rice paddy, looked up at the eclipse, and he assigned it to his Cthulhu god, that, uh, honey, where's that come from? That comes from Cthulhu. He, he just assigned it to his Cthulhu god, then so what? He's still a million times more advanced. And that's, that thinking is a million times more productive than what the citizens of the United States will do in 2024, looking up at it. Great American Eclipse 2024, people around us, they'll look for normal, and they'll look for physical and scientific explanations for what they're witnessing, even though all these emotions will be pulled out of them and some will cry and they'll go, oh my God, oh my God, and all this. They'll basically have a spiritual uh, experience, but they'll try to ignore it. And then they'll always go back to the science of what the news is saying is happening. And then all this incredible emotion and what they witness, it'd be once in a lifetime things. And it'll all be forgotten about five minutes later when the dominoes pizza arrives. They'll forget the whole experience. Incredibly, unbelievably, twenty to 30,000 people in the Umbra won't even see the eclipse because of a new TikTok dance they're watching. So ancient man, even one who praised Cthulhu for the eclipse, is getting the big part right over your cousin and the guy down the cul-de-sac. So ancient man's a winner he sees, via the eclipse and many other things he experiences in his life, that this place is wondrous beyond physical and scientific explanations. And the most important part, he sees or feels that he's a part of the wonder of it all. He's part of it. The scientific explanations separate you from it. That's what it's designed to do, to keep you spiritually at bay with yourself. The praiser of Cthulhu for the eclipse is a winner compa compared to, it doesn't matter if he, whatever God he picked was wrong over the eclipse, he's getting the right spiritual experience out of the eclipse. He's part of it all. He's part of the wonder. Makes him feel bigger. Not seeing it as very real makes himself bigger. Accepting the scientific explanations for how that and everything else works makes anybody that accepts that smaller. And guess what? I'll give you two guesses, but you're only going to need one. That's exactly what they were designed to do without anybody putting, pushing forth the scientific explanations, being aware in any way that they're in on it or how they're fulfilling not nilk wishes. And people still think it's people in smoking rooms. I'm not going to continue on that second part, guys, of shooting the shit. This went too long, and it's, I think it's too important. I'll shoot the shit some other time.